believe in you. All right, and we are back. We're, We're back. back. We're back. We're back. Oh, it's been so long. I've I don't know what all. happened. I don't know Bye, what on earth transpired. I literally spent hundreds of dollars to upgrade my Wi-Fi the last few weeks, and it has only caused me grief. So, the universe is aligned against us in some strange way. Hold on, know, let me uh, let me link the new know, version uh, in the comments the to the old one because whoops and yeah. paste and we're good. Okay, Sorry, friends. <laughs> oh man, it's always you with the streams. It I is. <laughs> this is why I'm never the one in charge of streaming, but I'm the only one with a laptop right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. Oh man! All right, where were we? I think I was like midway through talking about why Blue Eye Samurai slaps. Yeah, um, that's exactly funny, where we were. <laughs> like, I noticed that like you hadn't responded in a while, but it took me a second to like look down and notice that chat was also panicking. <laughs> so Tragic. I was like, oh yeah, uh, I have no idea when I cut off. Um, oh yeah, we were talking about saucy Victorian angles. <laughs> that must have been it. Someone at YouTube is like, "This is the secrets they can't know." Yeah. Um, but yeah, Blue Eye Samurai's uh, dynamic with gender I think is extremely interesting, and I really like how we get both Mizu with like the flip the table, go off and do your own thing best you can approach, uh, and Akemi the no actually hold on, there's a way to make this work for you. The system is unfair, but you can still live a life kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so, oh, I, oh, good. It bullshit all the way down. So I got through the thing I mentioned about the the research where it's like yeah. Looks like everybody was doing persistence hunting together, and uh, it's possible that gender essentialism is just bullshit. Good. I'm glad I don't need to do that again. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, oh, what a nightmare. Sorry, gang. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't mean for that to happen that way. Ah, <sighs> boy. Oh, it cut off it. Maybe it was BS all the way down. Perfect. <laughs> They're canceling to... us for our ankle takes and Perfect our understanding of history. Yeah. Oh, oh beautiful. Uh, Internet go see. skull. Yes, Adam, exactly. <laughs> oh, jeez. What a nightmare. Sorry about that, everybody. Yeah. So I did see people in the last chat talking about, like, Tumblr. They were like, yeah, Tumblr did this thing where you can boop people now. And I noticed that this morning. But they seem to have changed the game somehow while I wasn't looking because I've been receiving evil boops. I don't know what those are. Boops don't do anything. They just make... Oh, no. Wait. Blue, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay, chat's panicking. <sighs> Wait, they say it's, it's back. back. Okay. Again, it's back. What oh, a nightmare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, God, I'm sorry, chat. everybody. This is like some sick prank. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I really wanted <laughs> yeah. the stream to go nicely. It's rare that I'm just the can't... one on the control panel, but I, I apologize. I can't understand why things would be going weird today of all days. Yeah. But yeah, I don't understand what evil boops are, and I've been getting them. Um, this is, this is, truly, this is the it's so over, we're so back of streams. <laughs> um, I saw a couple comments saying it's Jover. I'm like, no. No. <laughs> no, it's not Jover yet. It's not Jover. <sighs> <sighs> anyway, yes. Tumblr did a thing where you can boop people, but now they're doing evil boops, and I don't understand what they are. Since I haven't been on Tumblr since we did this stream. Yeah. So I don't know what they did. Uh, Caitlin says, almost like YouTube is doing its own April Fool's prank. What the hell huh. is that? Yeah, that's a very weird concept. Why would you, like, what, <laughs> why would you have a day where, like, lying is normal? That's it seems like it would be very confusing. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Truly absurd. Maybe that's the real prank, trying to convince us that that exists. Because it's April 1st. What does that have to do with anything? Dr. Spooky yeah. says it's because it's April 1st. And tomorrow it'll be April 2nd. Yeah, what's your and point? Probably your internet will still be shitty. Yeah, I... Yeah. Weird, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yeah, uh. very strange. I don't know, the internet's always going off on something. Yeah, seriously. Somebody was like, this is a Rickroll, and then it wasn't. Can you believe it? <laughs> People are wild. Uh... <sighs> Lying is fun. 
Anyway. <laughs> when Facebook allowed you to poke people. Does Facebook not let you poke people anymore? I don't think I've used Facebook for its intended purpose. Facebook spaghetti in code is so ridiculous. Years. I wouldn't be surprised if you can still poke people with like some God. back alley, like old browser interface. Yeah, some weird hidden URL. Do you remember that thing that happened a year or two back where like, Fucking Facebook servers went down and all their internal door locks ran on the same system or oh something. Oh my god. Yeah. So like nobody could get anywhere. Or like, no, it was like the internal communications thing was Facebook Messenger, so nobody could talk to anybody. Um anyway, that was fun. Someone says you can poke people still. Fascinating. Wow. That's fun. It was very interesting to see that brief the shift online from privacy is very important never use, use your real name online and don't tell people your address to like oh wait if you give me your real name i can sell it to advertisers hey it's weird if you don't <laughs> use your real name online thanks facebook. you should totally do yeah come on thanks facebook so i'm kind of glad to see it die a slow death on account of how shitty that was and it's very funny that all of their exploits keep failing like i we could have good ar now Meta doesn't need to look like that, <laughs> you know? Uh, uh oh. Oh, you can hear. Okay, good. Every time you get quiet, I'm like, it's happening again. Oh, uh, no, I'm, I'm just reading chat. They're having fun. Uh, someone uh, said, Bonjour from Louisiana with a little fleur de lis emoji, uh, a lobster emoji, which I guess is for like a crawfish or something, and an alligator emoji. That's fun. I'm so, I was just I was just compared to a New Jersey mafia mom and those mushrooms in Hollow Knight, and now I'm trying to figure out what the fuck I did or said to do that. I have no goddamn idea. Like a wow. Wow. That's like an Owen Wilson thing. That's not a New Jersey mafia mom thing. Owen Wilson famously a New Jersey mafia mom. <laughs> What's the last thing I saw Owen Wilson in? I hope it wasn't Zoolander. Loki. I haven't watched Loki. Oh, okay. I've heard it's good, but strangely, when things start being unpleasant for me, I generally stop engaging with them. I have heard that, that Loki's quite good, though, so it's probably still good. I uh, I saw Nando's video about Loki season two is really bad up until the last episode where it all kind of comes together, but I don't know Ooh. if it was worth it. <laughs> like, all right, I trust wow. Nando on this one. <laughs> impressive i keep seeing stuff about x-men 97 or whatever the new thing is called and like i never watched the original one so i haven't we, we talked about this a little bit in the rolling with difficulty hangout actually so i, I don't want to retread ground for like the five of you that might overlap in that venn diagram um but i haven't watched any of it and this is a really petty reason but i saw like gifts from it and i was like oh they're they're doing that thing where all the characters are cell shaded 3d models that look like the 2D animation from the original show. And I just didn't, like, all my potential curiosity to watch it just deflated. It's such an arbitrary thing to judge it on. And I will probably at some point watch it if I hear exceptionally good things about it. But, like, it's just... I don't like that school of animation. It is so overtly a shortcut. It's, like, 2D animation hard. But we can kind of make 3D animation look like subpar stiff 2D animation. <laughs> and it's cheaper... And a little bit faster on the back end, because instead of having to draw shit, we can just model them once and then move them around. So Yeah. There are very, very few it. clips of Blue Eye Samurai where you can tell, oh, these are 3D animated rigs. But it's like there's five moments where I noticed it in the whole season of television. Whereas I'd yeah. imagine with like something like X-Men 97, it's like, oh, this is just what I'm looking at the whole time. But also, crucially, Blue Eye Samurai is not pretending to be 2D animation. Yeah, you know? exactly. Because they're doing like stuff that you cannot do in 2D. <laughs> yeah, Blue Eye Samurai is another one in the stable of 3D animated things that actually fucking understand what you can do with 3D animation. Uh, alongside Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse, um, uh, Puss in Boots The Last Wish with that sort of storybook painterly style they managed to figure out how to do uh what else honestly mitchell's versus the machines was pretty quirky uh i've heard if i don't mention the new tmnt movie indigo is going to start manifesting snakes in my home so the new TN tmnt movie apparently does good stuff for that yeah. but like it is 3d animation that is allowing itself to be 3d animation a lot of really good 3d animation is done by creators who are like what can this actually do and how can i use it and you get things like reboot that are groundbreaking for the time that are like, okay, we have extremely hard limitations on what we can and cannot do. And we're not going to even try with the shit we can't do. 
Like, oh, we can't render skin accurately? We're not going to. Everyone's going to look like an action figure. We can't render hair? Cool. Nobody's going to have hair that looks like hair. They're going to have, like, really short haircuts or, like, metal dreadlocks. And it's going to look great. It's going to look great. Damn it. It looks good. Anyway. Yeah. um, I see a lot of people uh, commenting about Arcane, which is a great example of stylized 3D animation that looks good. And I don't mean to say that, like, oh, we didn't realize Blue Eyes Samurai was 3D. Of course we realized it was 3D. There were very few moments in the show where it's like, that is a like a computer game character yep. on a screen we're not like seeing the whole painting it's like oh i see that this is basically like a 3d wire mesh puppet in front of me those are yeah. the very few moments where we're realizing that it's like we can tell arcane is 3d we can tell it's blue eye samurai blue is 3d samurai. it's not that it's just it's, yeah. it's when we notice the seams of the animation work so to speak yep and the thing is every time i specifically see the 3D cell shaded to look 2D thing. I'm like, this is a cost cutting measure. Like, because it is so purposefully trying to look like a 2D animation thing, but they aren't just 2D animating it, a thing that can still be done. Like, there's been advances in technology, but it doesn't make 2D animation no longer a thing people do. Like, obviously, you know, for a while you were getting like flash bones animation. Like, when, when My Little Pony was airing, it's like, oh, these are like, basically models that are puppeted around in the same way that like 3D models are puppeted around, but it's 2D flash animation and that's fine. But you also get good hand-drawn 2D animation and it's still good. It's still one of the best looking things you can put on a screen. Yeah. A couple so when they look, don't do that, sorry. I, I uh, well, the thing is like, I know this is a, I know this is petty. And the thing is I will probably watch the show if I hear particularly good things about the plot, but like, the only selling point I've heard is like, oh, it looks just like the, the the original animated show. You know, it's got the music. It's like an extension of the plot. And it's like, cool. But it doesn't actually. It it looks like somebody's taking shortcuts to make it look like that. So I, I initially develop a an unnecessarily harsh opinion of it solely because of how it looks. Uh, yeah. And the thing is, like, like, Dragon Prince did that too. But Dragon Prince wasn't trying specifically to emulate a show that already existed. Like, I just accepted that that's what it was going to look like. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair. I, I do see some people calling out uh, Guilty Gear and the Arc System Works games. There's a really good, right. uh, like, a few videos by New Frame Plus that talk about how they made 3D fighting game animation look like anime convincingly for both their Guilty Gear games and the Dragon Ball Fighter series. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's multiple videos, so I can't recall the one that pulls it up to mind, but uh, New Frame Press in general has a lot of good stuff on this, and you you learn to see things much more clearly after you watch his videos. They're they're great. Um, yeah. Definitely credit to uh, to that. Yeah, and like they, they had to do a lot of work to capture the fluidity and crazy camera angles of anime in a 3d thing that is naturally stiff you know you have to do some pretty weird cheats to make 3d animation look like that like bizarrely some of the best movies that are examples of this are the fucking hotel transylvania ones where Mm -hmm. like they take 3d models and they will do weird shit to them to make them move like 2d things because like isn't gendy tartakovsky involved in those i feel like he is and like in the hotel transylvania yeah he was yeah, and he loves what you can do with 2D animation, and that influence is definitely felt there, where it's like there is limitless possibility. Whereas if you if you 3D model a thing and move it around, it's going to basically always look like that thing with minor variations. You know, half of what makes Arcane and Blue Eye Samurai work so well in 3D is that they are not really built for, like, squash and stretch, you know? It's good that these yeah. characters look like real solid things that exist in a specific way and don't change very much. It It works. And it makes their movement feel heavy in a way that that it can be kind of... Well, I mean, you can obviously make things look heavy in 2D animation. 2D animation can do everything. It is the superlative best art form. But you can do some shit in 3D animation that is hard to do in 2D and vice versa. But when I see 3D that is trying to imitate 2D, it it, it just tickles my brain the wrong way, you know? Yeah. So, like, I hope it's good. And the thing is, if it's good, I'll watch it. I love it when things are good. But just from, the like, the gifts I saw of the first few episodes... I was like, oh, they're mm. doing this thing that I fundamentally don't like. Yeah. So unless I hear something else good about it, uh, I have no interest in watching the, it. The nostalgia alone is not gonna is not gonna get you uh, hooked in, so to speak. No, well, I don't have any nostalgia for it. Exactly. I never watched that. If it was X Men Evolution, but again, I would watch <laughs> it. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Genny Tartakovsky yeah. so Appreciation fun. Hour. <laughs> Everything that wanna, man it, does with animation is incredible. 
Yes. Even if the even if the storytelling sometimes leaves some things to be desired, his yes. grasp of animation is great. Like Samurai Jack season good. five is like the poster child of like, okay, I didn't really like what they did with this, but it looked beautiful. The animation mm-hmm. was great. I disagree with like 70% of the storytelling choices, but the animation was great. That's something he always has on lock. That's how I felt watching uh, Unicorn Warriors Eternal, which was one of his niche projects. Uh, and I feel bad because he wanted to make it for years and years and then he made it. Uh, and I didn't like it very much. It, <laughs> But they did some really interesting things with the animation. It's got this like like rubber hose kind of Betty Boop vibe very intentionally, but it's telling this like fantasy, historical, steampunk adventure thing. It's just like, as soon as I started thinking about the plot for more than five minutes, I was like, hey, none of this made sense or had to happen this way. Because like, I, I think the show was interesting and I think it would be good to watch it just for the animation because it is very good. Uh, but like the core conceit of the story is like, there's this evil force and in order to wage an eternal battle against it, these like warriors' souls are pre- are like temporarily downloaded into the host body so they can fight it and then safely store it in this robot, right? So that they clearly like the clearly the conceit is that they can be eternal warriors of the unicorn. So like they they can't die if their souls are constantly being downloaded into this robot between missions. So it's like reincarnation with extra steps, except. Like, two out of three of these guys seem to be kind of immortal anyway, so there's no reason to do the soul downloading thing. Like, they didn't even get soul downloaded because their bodies were injured or dying in the first place. It's just, like, one of them, his original body is still kicking around, and so are all of his relatives. Like, he's an elf, so it kind of makes sense he'd live forever or whatever. But, like, so there's no point in the soul downloading mechanic that is the entire conceit of the show. And one of the others is, like, this unbelievably powerful sorceress who's, like, the daughter of Merlin. And Merlin is still kicking around. (laughs) So clearly magical immortality is also a thing you can do. And it's just, like, I like a lot about this show. But the fact that the basic premise literally falls apart as soon as I think about it for ten minutes frustrates me. Because it makes it hard for me to enjoy the rest of it because I'm too busy being like, none of this shit makes any sense. That's tough. It's tough when yeah. some some element of the thing, whether it's story or animation or whatever, is just enough to take you out of it. Because there's some instances where it's like, look, I can I can overlook this and, and enjoy myself on on this media, whatever it might be. It it is always frustrating when there is just something that it's like, I maybe I wanna like this thing, but I, I cannot get over this this lurch to like turn that part of my brain off and just enjoy it. That's it's always frustrating, for me at least. Yeah. And I, I mean in this specific case, like, there's a lot of stories where I'm like, this core thing is dumb, but I can ignore it. But in this case, it's like, that is literally the foundation of all of the character drama. It is like, oh, this girl got possessed by, like, the the powerful sorceress spirit. And, like, the girl, she was, like, about to be married to her fiancé. But the sorceress spirit is in, like, a long-standing relationship with Elf Dude. So now she's literally trapped in a love triangle where, like, one of them is, like, the boy she was going to marry, but the other one is, like, the the, the guy that, who's, like, soulmates with her other soul. It's, like, this whole drama is, like, the core of all the character drama in the show. But none of it needs to be happening. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's it, I had a good time watching it. It was only afterwards when I started thinking it through where I was like, oh, no, they never explained this to my satisfaction and, in fact, made it worse. Um, but the thing is, like, Gendy's main thing is always animation he loves using animation to tell a story it almost feels like whenever he has to do dialogue he hates it and it's not good um (laughs) a little bit yeah like i I watched through all of primal and it only started getting weird in the last like three minutes honestly pretty good like 98 percent of it's good that's a good ratio Uh, that's a damn good ratio (laughs) and that is a show that has absolutely no comprehensible dialogue intentionally for the whole first season there's like no talking at all and then the the main character starts meeting characters who speak languages but not languages we know and not languages we ever get subtitled and it really helps sell his like isolation as like the last caveman in a world of clearly prototypical human civilizations i do love when media is willing to fuck with language like that and specifically like whether it's doing um like uh target language uh in a world that's like set somewhere uh or 
doing like conglings that are actually just gibberish we can't understand uh i like mm. when when media is willing to commit like that uh, like the one thing that i liked about that dumbass assassin's creed movie is that the parts that took place during inquisition spain were all in spanish i thought that was cool i actually really enjoyed that it gave character and depth to the world in a way that i thought was really really fun the rest of the movie was just ass, so it didn't really end up making it worth it. But I love when media does things like that and is willing to bring language into the media and not just making it like, oh, like you're if you watch a localized version, you get different language stuff. But like actually surfacing that, I think, is really cool. It's okay. We can subtweet Shadow of the Colossus in this one. Yeah, no, I mean, that's yeah. just, just a Kongling that you can't understand in this subtitle. It's just like, hey, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, but it, it helps kind of sell your separation from the world, you yeah. know, feeling like you are isolated. Like, not only is Wander isolated in the Forbidden Land, but you, the player, are isolated from the world you're engaging in, which I think is cool. Um, oh, man. A lot, of, a lot of good shows out there. And it's interesting to me how, like, a lot of these shows I complain about, I thoroughly enjoy. I think there's a lot of good stuff about them. Um Anything that Gendy has ever worked on is that incredibly interesting animation. Uh, one of my favorite things in Unicorn Warriors Eternal is how absolutely sad the elf boy can look. <laughs> like, just a wet cat of a man. Oh just my god. Cringe fail. It's very funny. Um, and Gendy was really taking advantage of like the like Betty Boop Cuphead kind of, I mean, you know, obviously it's not Cuphead's thing. It's the same thing that Cuphead was inspired by. Yeah. Like the rubber hose animation where everyone's got the eye with the little pie slice taken out of it, that kind of thing. Um, oh, that is what that good. is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it is. It, it's good shit. It's really interesting. And then the story is like, legally, I must include a story and I want there to be a yeah. robot. So here's the robot's job. And it's like, cool, fine, whatever. The best um, episodes of Samurai Jack are the ones with the least dialogue. Three Blind Archers, the the mm -hmm. uh, Samurai versus Ninja episode is incredible. You can just put oh, that the one fight with the zombies on a loop. Where... Oh, the one with yeah. the zombies too. Yeah, that's a great one. Terrifying. Yeah, because that's one where it's... I, I, honestly, I should rewatch that episode because I remember that one rewiring something in my brain. Yeah. I like. I went from like, I'm enjoying the show to like, I should find a way to steal the parts of this show that I like. <laughs> that's how yeah. you know the writers are really in your, in your head. Um yeah. Oh, actually, on the subject of interesting language stuff, I can bounce off a comment that somebody asked about, uh, which is thoughts on Time to Orbit Unknown, which uh, I've mentioned not in a video yet. But uh, so it's this, uh, I, I hesitate to call it short form because it's been running for like over 100 chapters at this point. It is a, an online uh, sci-fi story uh, that I've been uh, reading as it updates for like a few months now i follow the writer on tumblr um and they have some very interesting takes on stuff and it's uh it's interesting however i must warn you it is an inescapable adhd finger trap if you start reading it and your brain is even a little bit not neurotypical you will probably <laughs> not be able to stop until you're done you're stuck in there <laughs> yeah yeah it's like the most common message that the writer gets is like I had shit to do today and I didn't. And they're like, yeah, sorry, man. It's a thing that happens. Uh, it's, it does a lot of really interesting stuff. It's kind of like a far future ish. Humans have started to figure out like human space exploration has taken the form of we're launching some colony ships. It's called the javelin program. We're putting everybody in basically cryo sleep. Uh, and we're, we're launching 5,000 of them at these, these, probably good exoplanets uh and the writer is like like a sociologist uh, sorry the main character they're a sociologist who's like they wrote a couple books about like why the javelin program is like a very reasonable you know expansion on the human instinct to explore but internally it's clear that they're just very bad at processing their grief and survivor's guilt over some shit that happened in their life so their solution is to launch themselves into space about it and uh so that's fun that's great um but like it's far future human society and the the story does not give the reader any concessions on like here's how this is different from oh shit you okay yeah i'm fine my, my phone dropped and then the audio got a little staticky can you hear me still i can hear you fine okay good uh the, sorry the name of the story is time to orbit unknown uh because initially the uh the protagonist wakes up on the ship and uh some shit's gone down 
and they're kind of trying to figure out what happened, what is happening, and uh, how much they can do to safely get the ship where it's going. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Sorry. Okay. Chad is Chad is yelling about the audio, but I think they might just be it's freaking just, out. It was, it was just the drop. Yeah. Okay. Great. 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 Um. So. So yes, the the, the book will, the story will in no way hold your hand on like what is normal and what is not because of course to the characters this is the world they've lived in their whole lives they have specific senses of normalcy and things that are not worth commenting on so for instance like several several chapters into the story when they wake a colonist from cryosleep it's mentioned that this this person has unusual fingernails they have fingernails that have not been subject to a form of genetic engineering that makes them like four times stronger grow significantly slower and like uh like a dark color they have thin semi-transparent fingernails which is weird to our protagonist because that's what we think normal fingernails are because they are like this is like far future this particular genetic modification got really popular and spread very far but certain colonies don't have it so and we just never hear this like the characters never like i looked in the mirror and observed <laughs> my uh my my unnaturally thick and dark fingernails Surely they were the norm where I came from, but I always thought they were weird looking. Like, none of that shit. So that's good. That's good world building, and it's a good way to communicate world building. Um, and uh, I've seen a few stories do this recently. Uh, but, like, there's a few things about Time to Orbit Unknown that I think are cool. Uh, for one thing, it's got a gender trinary, but it also has people who are outside of that. The protagonist is non-trinary. Uh, but it's basically like there are three genders. There's male, female, and Brennan. Uh no further explanation. They use key chem pronouns, and it comes through a lot. It's very fun, uh, and it's just like, yeah, this is this is the normalcy of the space future. Some of the characters that get woken up are Brennans. Um, there's a lot of details about like certain records were lost. Uh, the name of the United States is thought to be lost information. That like it's treated like it must have been a taboo because nobody ever called it by its real name. They just called it the United States of America, which is obviously like a toponym or something like that. So just just little fun things like that. Um, I think it's very interesting. I am very fond of that specific flavor of hard sci-fi where like problems and solutions arise from the the world building and aren't just like contrived and shit. Oh um, hi, Mark. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Cool story, Mark. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Hello, Cyan. surprise, Cyan, Cyan coming to say hi. <laughs> we finished. Absolutely up. not expecting that voice on the call. I was briefly like <laughs> flung out of all sense of normalcy. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. We finished playing D and D. I threatened some guys' kids because that's what bards <laughs> do. <laughs> Yay! Oh my Otherwise, god. Also, Cleo got trapped in our back staircase. And what? <laughs> I don't know how she got in there, but I kept hearing her scream, and I was like, Cleo, come here, come here, and she kept screaming. And finally, I was like, she's not in the staircases. How long was she in there? <laughs> like, oh, solid no. 20 minutes. <laughs> she's crying. <laughs> I was like, wait. And then she and I played for a bit while we were playing D&D. &D. Okay. That's yeah, good. It was pretty. I was like, oh, no. So, yeah, it's been uh, it's been fun. Uh <laughs> Oh man! Well, I'm glad she got stuck in the back staircase rather than like outside or anything. But I, just, I didn't know where she was. She usually like so. Cleo does this thing where when she wants attention, instead of coming and finding us, she just screams from various locations in the house, like a toddler. <laughs> um, so I just kind of assumed she was screaming from a various location in the house. And so when I went up to go find her, eventually I was like, "Oh no." <laughs> I yeah, don't know how she... she did it, but she's in the staircase. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that because, of course, she also does the six a.m. screaming because she is accustomed to being yeah. fed around then. Oh, here she uh, is, hello, baby. And I, I had that happen at one point when I was over. Uh, but the cool thing is, like, I love Cleo dearly, but when I am asleep, <laughs> I stay asleep, and when I am like half asleep, I stay asleep. So, like, I heard her screaming, and I was like, "Yep, yeah, what's up, girl? That's cool." <laughs> and then she clearly was not satisfied with this response because she climbed on the bed and stood on my torso for a little while. And I was like, that's cool, baby girl. You do whatever you want. And then when she realized it wasn't working, she left and I immediately went fully back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like everyone's calling Cleo a Victorian child because she totally is. <laughs> Mother. The other Mama. Thing uh, the consumption will take me. <laughs> the, the other thing she does when she wants attention is she has a toy that's like one of those string toys with a wooden stick on the end. And she grabs it by the string part 
and like drags it up and down the stairs screaming because <laughs> yeah. it's thought, loud yeah at first we thought it was because she wanted to play with said toy but i think she just does it for attention it's the you know loudest what? way she can announce her presence so you'll just hear meow boom, 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 boom. meow Yep. Honestly, what I love about her is she's got a really strong sense of rhythm because when she gets screamy, she always like meows exactly once a second. Yep. It's just like meh, meh, meh. And it's just like, yes, amazing. She's a Set Swiss that tempo, clock. girl. <laughs> well, she didn't really scream when she when we first got her. She was pretty silent and would kind of squeak occasionally. She had squeaks, yeah. Um, mm. And she still kind of does like a bit of a screamy meow versus like a meow meow. Um, a meow, a meow meow. A meow meow. Meow meow meow. meow she meow, is meow. the meow meow. Anyway. <laughs> She's a meow tronome. A meow wow, tronome. That's good. That's Thank good. Thank you, chat. I love it. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Mother, she... hire a butler. I wish to push them from atop the stairs. <laughs> she would, though. Actually, What's that from? A <laughs> uh, person in chat just said it. <laughs> oh, okay. I could have sworn that's like a quote from something. Probably is. It might be. That's, that is very funny, though, either way. But, yeah, she mm -hmm. just. She probably wouldn't push them down the stairs. She would just make them pet her and then scream when they stopped, which is her other go-to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know that she's ever, like, decided she didn't want to be pet. She is a pet pet machine. She occasionally gets bitey. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm petting her, she'll, like, just get up and move, like, one foot away, and I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, she doesn't want to be pet anymore. Yeah. But I also tend to pet her at every given opportunity, so I might be the only person who actually, like, Hits her pet threshold of, of that's too much pet. <laughs> too much pet. But yeah. What I've learned is that Cleo snores a little bit, and it's the cutest <laughs> noise you've ever heard. Because, like, she needs to be really deep in it for it to happen. She'll, like, like <laughs> she took a nap on the guest bed, just, like, fully curled up into a ball. But it's, like, the kind of way that a person would sleep really messily if they were very tired. Like, <laughs> one arm fully out, like, face mashed against it. She was doing that while the rest of her was in shrimp mode. And, like, I, I put the blanket a little bit over her, and she didn't wake up at all. But she was just making these little, like, like snorty little squeaks very regularly. And I was like, this is fucking adorable. I hope she's having a nice dream. I think what she usually does. Occasionally, she, like, is sleeping and then does, like, a big jump up when she wakes up. We're like, yeah, oh, no, like did you have startles a herself nightmare? to alertness, yeah. And then she's like, yep. mm, yes, pets, never mind, I'm going back to sleep. Yep. <laughs> Do we pet Cleo at least three times a day? Oh, we pet Cleo way, way more, more than, than that. that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what I love about Cleo is that she truly does not give a fuck about uh, anybody trying to stop her from doing crimes. But when she senses that, like, the, the authorities are closing in, she will do the, but I'm just too cute and adorable ploy, like, very purposefully. Uh so in the in the days when we were still attempting to keep her out of the guest bedroom so that my allergies wouldn't act up before we gave up and I decided it was more fun I to like just have cat on bed instead of like before I gave, gave up. up and started officially breaking the the, the house rules so she could come in and nap on the bed with me um I uh I, I she was like up on the table and I was like Cleo you got to get off the table and and out of the room so I can go to bed and she was like Meh. and I was like no you got to you got to and like she was wedged in such a way where I was like I don't know if I can pick her up from this angle but she could clearly like tell because she moved out of it and then she dove onto the rug and immediately like rolled into like like pet my belly mode just with the biggest cutest eyes and I was like <laughs> well okay I guess we can hang out down here for a little while first I but the funniest part is I think Cyan you heard me say all right I guess I'm you're just too adorable for me to kick you out because like 15 seconds later you walked in and picked her up and left <laughs> I was like thank you thank you for saving me so I can go to bed part of being Cleo's owner is learning to know when Cleo is up on her bullshit tm <laughs> yeah so. i th this is just the full confirmation that like i would not be able to resist the specific kinds of mind control i would be that person who succumbs immediately and needs to get snapped out of it well so like when we first got cleo i i had a cat growing up um who i loved she was great lived to be like 16 years old was older than two of my sisters um so anyway I, like i was pretty used to cats when we got cats and blue was like you know i've never had a pet before like what am i gonna do and i think it took like exactly three days for her to just like start following you around everywhere yeah pretty much amazing <laughs> hello what are yeah. you stop licking the rug. truly the archetypical like my dad and the cat he said he didn't want thing <laughs> well and so my dad is a bit of a cat person that's part of the reason why we had a cat growing up uh her name was pinecone we found her under a pine cone tree during a snowstorm and we kept her um and at the time my mom was allergic to cats but no one else was 
Turns out all three of my siblings are allergic to cats, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so my dad was obviously a bit of a cat person. He did a lot of the taking care of the cat, and I did a lot of the rest of it. Um, and so when he came to visit a few weekends ago with my mom was the first time he really got to spend any time with Cleo. And he just kept being like, hello, cat. And then her, <laughs> and being like, if your cat wants pets, I'm like, her name is Cleo. It's okay. You can pet her. <laughs> that is a very your dad thing to do <laughs> i can visualize it perfectly hello cat hello cat uh, uh she is yep. precious also she really wanted to get into those drawers in the guest room oh yeah, yeah. i had to they're full of yarn <laughs> yeah i had to barricade them but the the f- cool thing is i made it work i literally i barricaded them in such a way that she actually could not get around it and when she figured that out she fully stopped. She she absolutely started behaving herself and just being adorable. Uh, but the great part is before that, when I when I had like a, the barricade in a slightly different arrangement, and she could still kind of open one, she was like head deep in it, and I was like, Cleo, Cleo, knock it off, Cleo, stop, and like like my hands on her, trying to move her away, and she couldn't give less of a fuck. Yeah, she yeah. was in the sauce. Unfortunately, she's very smart. When we first got her, we wanted to like. You know, when they say you get a new pet, you start them in, like, a small area and slowly expose them to the rest of your house. Well, we were living in a basement-level studio, so the only place we had to put her was the bathroom. Uh, So we put her in the bathroom, you know, with all her stuff, and she started eating the door. So we let her out. Mm -hmm. But we still wanted to be able to, like, make what we now call cat jail for her, where, like, there was a spot that was for her, and there was a spot that was for us when we were doing things like cooking. So we tried to put up a baby gate. Uh, that didn't work. She could go through it. That's actually, that's Smarter in the, the Cleo cameo baby. video where I say, Cleo, no, that's illegal. And she jumps through and I give her like the 8-bit <laughs> sunglasses. And I think I play like the Snoop Dogg riff from the next episode <laughs> oh. uh, wow. to signify crime. Yeah, <laughs> of course. So we kept trying to like change the gate in Oops, some way and she kept getting around it. So eventually we're like, all right, this is your territory. Um, And as we've slowly but surely moved into larger spaces, she has also decided that everything is her territory. So we decided in this place we would make the guest room a no Cleo zone. Mm Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. That's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Every time you come, we just deep clean clean it. But as a result, that's her favorite room. And it's also like my craft room. So I'll be doing a craft and I'll just hear on the outside like, I'm like, you don't need, you have the rest of the house. (laughs) <laughs> but i want this part mama so i can shove the butler down the stairs from here but mama you have wool in there and that's the good stuff mama you are keeping the yarn balls from me you are quarantining them away from my paws <laughs> every so often I, I do find yarn just like in the hallway i'm like how did you get that where did you get <laughs> yeah that? i i had that moment where i was like oh she got one of the drawers open oh shit there's yarn balls on the floor i should put those back um I'm convinced she can oh, smell man. them, like, because they're wool. I'm convinced she can just kind of, like, smell them and is like, this is mine. Oh, maybe so, yeah. She's sitting. I, right I will say, though, Cleo has a very strong personality. And the way I noticed this was that we could tell, because, like, she had a little bit of vet work that needed to be done, like, <laughs> semi-recently. And oh, no. because she is too strong for the authorities, they were like, <laughs> yeah, can you, like, give her, like, this mild sedative beforehand so that she chills the fuck out a little bit and we can actually do this this time. Yeah. So I was like, Cleo's acting a little bit off. And you were like, yeah, she's got like about as much of this in her system as I would. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we... She was just, very, she was just running a little slow, a little chill pupils, enormous. Basically, <laughs> like all we day. took her to the vet for a blood draw and two vet techs, the vet and myself could not get a blood draw on her. And they're like, your cat's very strong. I'm like, apparently so she's we, a strong girl drug. this kitty is zonked yeah off her ass <laughs> she and the great thing like is like staring like Ooh. Yeah. and then we bring her to the vet and instead of like screaming because she doesn't like other cats she loves the vet but hates the other cats um hmm. she was just saying they're like meow. Meow. <laughs> and then i think red you were gonna say that after cleo came back to uh yeah. she was acting in a way <laughs> Yeah, well, it's great because, like, she was still a little bit out of it, but then, like, we went out to lunch, and when we came back, she was, like, sitting by the front door, <laughs> pupils tiny. 
kind of sullen and i was like oh she's coming down and she's not happy about it <laughs> yeah sometimes we She'll, come home she, and she just screams at us like where have you been i've been up mm-hmm. all day waiting for you <laughs> You never call, you never write, but also I don't think cats really have a concept of time, except for the fact where she can read the clocks and knows that yeah. things are weird. She can read yeah. the clocks. Sometimes she will wake me up at, at like 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. on the dot. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, the thing with Cleo is she needs someone to come watch her when we're gone, um, or she has to be put, like, in a boarding facility because one time we were like, Oh, we'll be out all day. We'll leave her some food. She'll be fine. We come back. She hasn't eaten the food. She's looking at us like, what time is it? <laughs> all time is a concept. We're like, okay, you just base your life off of our schedule. That's adorable. I've and been also, so hungry. Uh, just so sad. <laughs> so, but it does make sense. Like, cats are very social creatures in their own way. You yeah. know, they, not in the same way that dogs are social, but like, Cats do that thing where they mirror you, or like if you're interested in a thing, they're interested in a thing. It's like how you can, you can kind of tell if a cat's paying attention to you because like if you look in a direction, the cat will frequently look in the same direction. Yeah. It's like oh, what's over there that's caught your interest? Well, so like I have a desk that I technically have, but am not generally able to use because I go to sit at said desk and there's a small fluffy butt on my chair, uh, and mm-hmm. I think it's because it's in eyesight basically from blue's desk so when blue is sitting at his desk cleo is like ah yes i must go to my desk yeah do work (laughs) things yeah of course when we're recording she always comes in to participate uh rubs her butt on the i was doing the rolling with difficulty hangout and like the door to the library was shut and she was just sitting outside of it staring at me for about 15 minutes and then she just like like started going at the left door and fully pushed it open Came in, climbed on everything, and then left immediately. I was like, all right, was it worth it, girl? <laughs> Looks the same as it did before. She is a big potato. We love her. And oh, she yes. also now has a wonderful cat sitter who comes and watches her when we're gone. Yeah. She's sitting one foot away, and she's like, don't tell me you're She's leaving like, again. Say nice things about me, humies. <laughs> say how cute yeah. I am and my little pets. Are you enumerating my various crimes? She's actually very well behaved for a cat. Whenever she yes, we we keep her inside. She is an inside cat, but as most inside cats, she occasionally breaks out. She doesn't try to run when she breaks out, though. She just goes to our backyard, so we have to chase her. And then she's like, "Ha ha! I have succeeded in making you follow me." <laughs> I knew you cared. And then she runs back to the front, so one of us has to stay out front, one has to go out back and just watch her. We have to back. pincer maneuver Cleo to get her back inside. <laughs> she also met this her neighbor's like cats dog. And... She was oh, so oh yeah. Thrilled. Cleo loves our neighbor's dog. <laughs> yeah. This is why cats and uh, five-man band lancers have so much in common. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, I'm going to run off on my own, but only because I know you'll chase me. <laughs> yeah. Cleo uh, the lancer in our five-man band. I think we've answered this on a podcast question once. I don't think I was on that podcast. I think Cleo was was like the heart. Aww. Was that how we did it? You know, I honestly can't remember because I I'm of the opinion that not every group breaks down into a clean five man band. That is fair. Uh, yeah. Cleo was a lance. And the problem is, everyone's like, "You're just a small little cinnamon bun. You're my little yeah. cinnamon bun." <laughs> I at some point I want to do a video about like team pets or like team mascots but i don't know if there's enough to talk about Cleo there and also guy. you're right thank you chat yes you're so right but the problem is like with that specific trope it's simultaneously too narrow and too wide because if you expand it to include like talking animals a lot of those are just characters that happen to be cats yeah you know so hear me but out. like rufus mm-hmm. technically talks but is also just the team mascot you are extremely correct but then you get things like, like, at what point do we start overlapping with, like, Perry the Platypus, who is a just James Bond, but he's a platypus and has a hat. I can't make, a, like it just, I can't yeah. make a Perry the Platypus sound. It's like, ah, Perry the Platypus. Yeah, so I, so I don't know. I, I feel like there's, I would need to set some boundaries, and then I would have a lot to talk about anyway. But also, I don't know if it would be interesting, because the thing is, the team mascot frequently does not have a ton to do. Oh, so you know? pointed out Appa. Yeah, Appa and Momo. Like, those guys are, they're just, they, they look cute. Appa is their way to get from point A to point B fast, and Momo 
is also there. Like, they don't contribute to the plot tremendously. They're, like, kind of tonally representative. You know, when Appa's missing, it, it kind of is a bit of a darkest hour in season two. It's significant that Aang sends Momo away before he fights Fire Lord Ozai, and then he flies back when everything's okay. But, like, that's not... That's not so much of a a story beat. That's in the same... That's not even as significant as, like, we shoot out the comic relief characters before the big dramatic finale so that we could keep it tonally significant. This is just, like, they have a cute pet. And the problem is I worry that if I, if I run this down to the end, I'll just hit, hey, we gotta have something we can make plushies out of. And that's a dead end, because as soon as shit gets toyetic, it's a dead end. Yeah. yeah, I mean, someone pointed out, like, Scooby-Doo. Uh, there are other characters who do it, but you're right that sometimes it does seem like they're just making them to sell toys, like Scrappy-Doo. Um, Scrappy-Doo, Scrappy-Doo was actually... a spawn of hell. <laughs> no, 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 no. Scrappy-Doo was actually much more interesting than that. Uh, I, I don't remember why I was looking this up. I think... I was looking up kid sidekicks. Uh, I, I was trying to figure out a way to, to consolidate my thoughts on that, and I ended up concluding that maybe I need to do more research. Like, I don't think it's in a scriptable state yet. But Scrappy-Doo was created because Scooby-Doo's reviews were falling tremendously because it had gotten too formulaic. It had been running for, like, decades or something. It had been running for a while, at least. And the formula was getting too solid. So they were like, hey, let's introduce a character that shakes things up. Let's make him... Uh, everything that Scooby-Doo is not, where Scooby-Doo is cowardly, this character will be brave to the point of foolishness, because that will force Scooby and Shaggy to act, whereby their nature, they instead simply flee the plot at every opportunity. This will actually drag them into the line of fire and give them more stuff to do. And it fucking worked. He brought their ratings back up sky high, and wow. at the time, all the reviews were like, Scrappy-Doo is a welcome fre- breath of fresh air in the otherwise stale Scooby-Doo franchise. And it was only, like, with the benefit of a few years of hindsight that people were like, God, that guy's so annoying. What the <laughs> fuck? But, like, by that point, Scooby-Doo was already back to being, like, a staple household name, and everything was fine again. Uh, someone did point out that uh, more good characters would be Maximus and also Sven from Tangled and Frozen, respectively. Uh, that's fair. That's oh, fair. yeah. But then the, the, the problem you get there is that, like, Maximus is great. I, my favorite theory about him is that the captain of the guard was magically transformed into a horse and everyone's just kind of dealing with it. Because um, that horse acts like a fucking person. Come on. Um, but Sven is a non-character. Sorry, what? Lucy uh, says, Scrappy-Doo was slandered by James Gunn in a way not seen since the election of 1800. I have no idea what that's even <laughs> referring to, but that is so specific. Uh, the election of 1800... Are we making a Hamilton reference here? That's got to be a Hamilton reference. Also, Pegasus yeah. from Hercules, indeed. Yeah. Not sure if that technically constitutes an animal or a mythical creature, but like... No, it, it fits. It fits. It's a horse. Right, but again, those guys aren't characters. They are modes of transportation that occasionally make funny you faces. You need to tell me that Pegasus is not a character in Hercules? Pegasus doesn't have a lot going on. He's how he gets from point A to point B. He has He's cute and toyetic. Arc. He tries to punch people he hates meg he is the voice of reason without a voice <laughs> huh well now i've discovered a whole new problem with me making this video <laughs> oh they yelled at okay. I... but sven oh sven is gary a really interesting example. From spongebob oh yeah, Maybe, yeah. well yeah, gary's yeah. a barely sentient MacGuffin most of the time but like fucking sven Sven was like when Disney was starting the self-parody of like, oh, a talking animal mascot, how stupid. This weirdo who lives in the woods by himself just pretends like his reindeer can talk. And like, so how much of Sven's personality is just what we're getting through uh, uh, Kristoff, you know? Like, it's just, when he's doing the voice, Sven does the face that matches it. But I mean, also, he's like, not actually a character. How much of what we say about Cleo is just us giving voice to what we think her facial and uh, Cleo has mean. a personality. But, but also right? you on, the to, like, of, her over. on the subject of Frozen, like, oh, we can't be so weird and wacky as to have this reindeer talk from the same movie with an animated talking snowman. Like, uh. it, <laughs> Oh, toothless. Yeah, they did the math on which of those guys would sell more plushies, and they settled on Olaf the Snowman. Yeah, fair. Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. I mean, Toothless is get... an interesting case. I was gonna say, if you want to well, get real meta with it, you have Pikachu from the Pokemon animated. You have every Pokemon. No, specifically. <laughs> well, that's Pikachu. the thing. You got you got the animal sidekicks, and then you have the space of horse girl characters. You know. <laughs> 
where they're like they're skittish and they don't really like the main character or anybody but slowly a bond forms and by the end these two would die for each other and it's like great cool that's every horse movie that's how to train your dragon that's technically the iron giant and bumblebee kind of because bumblebee's just the iron giant but again and uh it's the ash and pikachu what's up with cool. the beerless slander happening in the chat oh <laughs> it's because at one point austin misspoke and said like yeah he's just a dumb animal but he wasn't talking about virla but we had just been talking about virla and he didn't like switch the pronouns around properly so it, so oh uh, i think we're talking about like like villain intelligence so just virla being a dumb animal became like a running gag where it's like oh well as we know virla's just a dumb animal so um Gosh. but that's why oh, i keep so saying cruel i just keep saying no. virla's a dumb animal no. like excuse you <laughs> yeah like it's incredibly mean out of the context that we all were in on the joke initially got it got it yeah, yeah. And of course everyone who's bringing it up knows the context intimately whereas me not a uh not a thorough uh rolling with difficulty watcher i'm like what <laughs> i've listened yeah. to a roll with difficulty <laughs> do you call the individual episodes rolls <laughs> or are they difficulty levels <laughs> But, like, some of the examples that are coming up in chat is exposing the difficulty I had with trying to set boundaries on the trope of animal sidekick. Because yeah. Jake the dog is not an animal sidekick. Jake the dog is a full protagonist who happens to be a dog that can shapeshift. I mean, Scooby-Doo is a full protagonist that happens to be a dog with sentience. Right. It's, but that's where you start getting yeah. the awkwardness. It, it almost, it's basically, like, one level away from the trope of characters, Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Animal Stitch characters. is another horse girl one. Uh, I think you should just do horse girls instead. I... <laughs> but then I'd have to watch a bunch of horse girl movies. I mean, you can just watch Lord of the Rings. That's a horse girl movie. Oh, I guess it is. Yeah. <laughs> All the research I did on this was watching Lord of the Rings again. Extended edition, of course. I'm not a farmer. Anyway. Oh. What are we doing when we're at the eclipse and not watching the eclipse? Oh, my God. Eclipse? No, we're no. We have edition. shit to do. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> I am 100% on board for this plan. Sign me the fuck up. I uh. own them all on digital. <laughs> Yay! Which means you can watch them anywhere. We also own all seven Mission Impossible movies. We do. And oh, all four yeah. John Wick movies. I'll, I'll watch the Mission Impossibles <laughs> again at the drop of a hat. Man. Iggy from JoJo? I mean... I, I Don't ask me about JoJo. I have no idea. <laughs> All I know about JoJo is that they have a habit of killing dogs. So. Oh, Shira Swiftwing. Yeah, that's because like, he's another awkward. Swiftwing one. mostly doesn't talk until that Swiftwing suddenly so. talks. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. Like we, you get this weird or Swiftwind. Yeah. It's well, there's this huge separation between animal sidekick that can talk and animal sidekick that can't talk because animal sidekicks that can't talk are usually just like cute mascots. Oh, that basically just exists for plushies. But the thing is, like, the thing is, I have seen that done well because there's one of those in Hilda and they have, like, this, this incredibly heartbreaking episode uh, where, like, it, it, Twig, Deer Fox, can't talk, just a cute little baby animal that they adopted a few years back when they found it. It's great. And then there's basically an episode where the premise is, like, Twig the deer fox is feeling kind of neglected. Like, Hilda's got friends now. She's going off on adventures. Twig doesn't come with them. And at home, like, mom's out at work. Twig's left alone at home. And also, Twig is experiencing some kind of, like, like maybe some kind of migration instinct. Because Twig is a magical creature. So that can be a lot of things. It can be weird. And essentially, it kind of is brought up like, hey, yeah, we've never seen another animal like Twig. I wonder where the others are. I wonder where his parents are. I wonder if they miss him. And, like, all this kind of comes up in this episode and it's kind of got the same energy as like Appa's Lost Days where it's like we kind of get the episode of focus on the non-verbal animal sidekick as they get you know we see what they were up to when they weren't with the main characters and that episode is really good and heartbreaking and it was another one where I was like I don't know how they're gonna end this they might end this in one way and they might end this the sad way but I couldn't predict it so I know they can do it well but they so rarely do that I'm not sure I would have any other examples of like a good episode where a non-verbal animal sidekick kind of gets their day in the sun. So you understand my struggle. It's it's tricky and it's the kind of episode where you would theoretically spend 70% of the runtime of a normal trope talk just setting the parameters. Uh-huh. And then it's like 
anyone who would disagree with the parameters of like, oh, well, I think we should talk about this. It's like, well, I, I don't I know. I disagreed, so <laughs> You're just whatever. setting the bounds of the conversation uh, with mm-hmm. most of the length of a regular trope talk. Someone asked about yeah. Chewbacca, and I think the answer to that question really depends on if you've watched the Christmas special or not. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on. We all know Han is the animal sidekick in that relationship. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, uh, it's it's an interesting Oops, space of tropes that I think, Red, you've kind of mentioned a couple examples of, like, this is a trope that is interesting, but is almost impossible to talk about intelligently by its nature. Like, we just spent, like, 20 minutes trying to set boundaries for the conversation, let alone mm-hmm. actually getting into, like, substantive analysis that you'd usually expect on a trope talk. So there are a handful of other examples like this where I think, Red, you've, like, you've circled a point and thought, you know what, I don't think this is going to make any sense, or at least it would be hideously unwieldy to actually try to sit down and do this. So hear me out. Yeah. All three of us just do a uh, movie struck episode <laughs> where we just talk <laughs> about the little animal guys. <laughs> just the little guys. Just but that's what keeps guy. That's the thing. Like I would want to probably define this strictly to focus just on the actual little guys. And it's like maybe some of them can talk, but honestly, mostly little guys that can talk are just full characters that happen to be animals like Scooby Doo or, you know, Stitch where it's like that that's a guy who's got a full arc all his own he just happens to not be person shaped so I'm we're sure like maybe Lee he's an animal the sidekick animal sidekick in that one i that's don't, yeah but I, that's why the dynamic gets weird <laughs> she bites people but <laughs> she does but technically so does stitch i really think that's a dynamic of equals you know that's yeah. that's two broken yeah, yeah. souls who found each other but that's the thing like if you define it too loosely, after a certain point, you're just talking about characters that happen to be animals. But the problem is, if I define it that way, I wind up with only the animal sidekicks that aren't particularly nuanced characters on their own. And I don't want to dead end into toy sales, because that's the kind of thing that, like, I like doing my story research by engaging with the story and then thinking about it. I don't like having to look up the production process and the companies that changed hands and whether there was executive meddling and, like... Because sometimes that information isn't even public. So it would just be a huge pain in the ass. I was finding this when I was trying to research giant robots. Yeah. Because, like, so much of that shit gets toyetic, like, immediately. Because it's all about... Oh, like, Gundams look like that, even though it's a gritty war movie in the first case. They look like that because the people who were like, we're going to design toys based on this, were like, it would be good if it had bright colors on it. So it looks like a fucking parade float while it's... Specifically talk about the horrors of war and child soldiers. Yeah. And I don't know. I, It's not the kind of thing that I would feel responsible. If it, I would feel irresponsible if I didn't bring it up because it is clearly so instrumental to how the genre gets shaped, especially when you factor in things like Transformers, where it's like, why do they keep cycling out the main characters and bringing in new ones? Oh, toys, right. They yep. cycle out the ones that aren't selling well so they can bring in new ones. But if I'm just watching the show... I'm like, why would they do that? That's such bad writing. And it's like, it is, but it happened for a reason. And it wasn't because the writing decided to suddenly get bad. You know, that kind of thing. This reminds me of the uh, 90s Spider-Man, which was designed that way specifically to sell toys, which is the Mm -hmm. equal and opposite. Spectacular Spider-Man is designed that way so that fight choreography is easier. (laughs) Cleo is climbing back and forth across our two laps trying to find a comfortable position which is not easy seeing as we're sharing one set of headphones yeah (laughs) oh cleo i i feel like cleo wants to be a lap cat but does not fundamentally find the human lap particularly comfortable no so she's like she'll sit on my lap and that's about it she doesn't let me Mm. hold her (laughs) (laughs) the thing is she doesn't let me hold her i hold her and then she's like hmm this is actually kind of comfy but yeah, yeah. she's yeah. gone she's very cute she's <laughs> gone she has dipped oh, <sighs> but yeah research into uh, like 9 50 oh damn yeah. yeah it's actually yeah it's actually a nighttime stream for once. it is actually after dark now <laughs> the chaos streams we uh, generally flow pretty naturally they this is quick. part of why yeah. i guess like behind the curtain this is part of why we did the after after show show so readily because it's like this is basically just the chaos streams but like every week do you guys think we could do that and it's like yeah sorry bi-weekly not that bi-weekly yep. the other bi-weekly um except for when but, it is uh, bi-weekly not that except bi-weekly, when it is bi-weekly, bi-weekly which is rare rarely. but sometimes it's bi-weekly uh so 
it was just like, yeah, we can just kind of sit down and shoot the shit for a while. Like, we don't tend to run out of conversation topics. No, uh, no last week <laughs> was, although I was testament surprised. to that. Oh. <laughs> True. But I was surprised because I was doing some of the first After Darks just, like, myself. And apparently I also don't run out of, you know, ammunition as long as chat is feeding me conversation uh, topics, yep. which is so always fun. you have the brain cell. <laughs> I get It's more like making me podcast is not so much a matter of motivating me to start it's a matter of finding a way to make me stop <laughs> that's why usually the uh the after after show shows end with indigo being like all right gang we ran past our 30 minute theoretical runtime <laughs> 10 minutes ago let's let's bring this home <laughs> i'm sorry no and i'm i'm often guilty of it too it can be mm-hmm. all three forms twice a week once every two weeks or bisexually every week jesus christ yeah <laughs> <laughs> They've ascended. <laughs> Just the same Not person who said something. Or this bi-weekly. It's the other bi-weekly. Yeah. This from the same person who said something about Blue and I sharing one set of headphones. And I was like, that's a way nicer way to say it than we're sharing a pair of like old style Apple headphones. I like the old style Apple headphones because they plug in and they don't have that squishy bullshit. So it actually fits in my ear. Blue does not yes. like uh, the ones that have the ear tips or over the head earbuds. So when we share earphones, it's the old Apple style. Yeah. I've tried other sorts of earbuds, but the ones that get too fancy with it, it's a little bit weird. It just, it, it makes my ears like unhappy, you know, makes them itchy and stuff. Yeah. So like, but I've never had that problem happy. with Apple earbuds. No, sorry, dear. It's all right. <laughs> I have my favorite brand of headphones. Uh, I like Jabra. I like their earbuds and I like their over the ear ones. Other people have yeah. their own preferences, but those are the ones that work for me. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. They do not work for blue. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. I've, se- I've seen people talk about wish a little bit. Oh, and oh, yeah. There's nothing yeah. to talk about. Oh, the Not show. really, because I... No, <laughs> no the, the, movie. the movie. Movie, whatever. Which, my th- I thought yeah. we, for a second we were talking, because we were talking about headphones. I thought we were talking about, like, the shitty website where you order things. Oh, oh yeah, no, the scam not one. The, not the... <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, not the, the AliExpress movie. knockoff. That's already yeah, just Although a, that does yeah, remind no. me. Uh, so, I don't know if you guys saw, they dropped a seven-minute Spider-Verse animated short called The Spider Within... However, Blue, I don't think you should watch it. Oh, no. Cool. It's good, (laughs) but it has, like, every possible variant on, like, arachnophobia trigger warning I can think of. Yeah. Yeah, that tracks. That tracks. Yeah. It's good. It's basically like Miles wrangles with his sleep paralysis demon. And I was like, fuck yeah. And then I was like, oh, it would make sense that this would be spider phobias. Cool, cool, cool. I'm having a good time because I don't have any spider phobias. But, like, I don't think you'd enjoy it. Spiders? He could be. I mean, I'm sure he could. In a multiverse of Spider-Mans, yeah. one of them's gonna have arachnophobia. I was like, <laughs> I mean, oh, I no. can just explain it since I don't think you should watch it, but basically it's that uh, Miles is feeling the the cumulative pressure of being Spider-Man and like, oh, his grades are slipping, his parents are disappointed in him, He's it's weighing him down, it's stressing him out, uh, and he kind of has like a... like. Uh, his dad's like, yeah, I got the movies. You know, I made the popcorn. We can sit down and have a nice one. And I was like, no, man, I'm really tired. I'm going to go to bed. And then he just kind of lies there, like with eyes wide open for a little while. And then clearly experiences sleep paralysis, which translates into a nightmare where he's sort of confronting this like black silhouette of himself with these like glowing yellow points where his eyes would be Jeez. kind of like the the silhouette in the no expectations graffiti that he drew and also kind of like the spots final form, yeah. which is interesting. Um, and uh, over the course of the nightmare, the the figure like transforms into a giant spider, and Miles at one point feels like he's covered in spiders, and it's just like it's a lot of like, oh, he's being Spider Man is stressing him out, and then he he kind of snaps out of it, and he goes down and is like, hey, Dad, can we talk? And his dad is supportive, but then clearly like they walk off into the rain together or into the night, uh, and he's like, you know, it's bothering you. It's like, oh, you know, like homework and stuff, like that kind of thing. So. It's it's a very cute little seven minute like what is Miles up to in the downtime between movies kind of things, but uh, for that specific reason, I don't think you would enjoy watching it. Yeah, that's very fair. <laughs> Someone did ask about delicious and delicious in dungeons. Have you guys? Delicious in dungeons. We dungeon. talked about it briefly. I, yeah, just a little bit because I haven't seen all of it. I'm trying not to spoil it because I've actually got them to watch three episodes. Yes. We and watched by it God one night them, after PAX. We mean she was here. 
And in another access to the TV. In another chat, Austin was like, Hey, has anyone seen Dungeon Meshi? And I was like, Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, like the funny thing is it's... like we we still read Stepflix account. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, when, absolutely. when she was like, Hey, we're watching this, it's like, well, I mean, you're the one paying for this. So like <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're tr- I guess we are. <laughs> in in Red's Netflix account, I have a profile that is called Blue. And the profile picture is no. Tails, so tails. Uh, yes. with a blue background, which is, I guess, one of the Netflix profile pictures you can get. And on Red's HBO Max account, my account name is Sonic, and the picture is Bugs Bunny. <laughs> the only one we pay for is Hulu. The funny thing is that we I also have Dropout and Disney Plus. We have Dropout. We that yes. Red has been using our Dropout account, so we we it's a sh- it's a family plan. Are you really millennial friends worth. if you don't share each other's accounts? Yeah, exactly. Ohana means family, motherfucker. But yeah, uh, I never used to set profile pics on anything. But of course, when Blue set profile pics, I had to also set profile pics. So now yeah. on Netflix, I am Shadow. And on HBO Max, I am Aku, the great and terrible. Um, but Delicious in Dungeon is really good. Yeah. And I'm glad you guys were getting a kick out of it. I love all of the voice cast is doing such a great job. Damien is great. Sung Won is great. The person who's voicing Marcel is great. Everyone's mm-hmm. bringing it. Marcella also nami sad. in like the live action one piece so oh good yeah that's year right, that's for right. her in anime stuff dropout is the best streaming service dropout is a very specific streaming service but they have very good content if it's got what you want you're set that's why we mm-hmm. watch it they do not however have a <coughs> switch app which no, is very fair which is frustrating but is sad do you want to switch chairs, dear? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't planning on staying, so I just pulled over like the footstool um, for Blue's office, like reading chair. Um, and the thing is, it it tilts, so you can put your feet at whatever angle you want. Um, and originally, ah, I was sitting on it properly, which is with one foot on each side. But now I'm sitting on it, so it rocks back and forth. Um, great for a footrest, not great for sitting on. <laughs> the first time mm. I sat on it for a podcast, I like fell over. <laughs> oh no! It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta. I actually am a couple episodes behind on Dungeon Meshi now, so I, I gotta catch up. Like I know what happens because I've read the whole manga. But you know, it's, I've been excited to see how they adapt it because. I think that Studio Trigger has been doing some really interesting things with the animation. Although, we basically only saw that, because we got up to episode three, uh, so you guys saw the living armor thing. Yeah, yeah. which was really cool. Slapped. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time where they really started going kind of Studio Trigger's signature style on it, which I thought was really good. But there's more good stuff to come, which I think is exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Now I just want to go watch it. You can. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, you guys you can. can. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't be the one to stop you. But also, how long we've been streaming for? Like uh, three and I mean, a half hours now. Yeah, two streams because our Wi-Fi cut out. Yeah, yeah. Did you yes. also notice that? Oh yeah, no. I had to. I was on a Discord call. Yeah. And my everything went down, so I ended up opening up my phone, and when I was on the way to go check the Wi-Fi, it just suddenly started working again. I like. I, I didn't don't touch know. it. I um, don't know. So. Yeah, yes. and I was like, "Ooh, I hope that didn't affect the stream." And it, it I spent so <laughs> much money to so upgrade our then. Wi-Fi, and it just broke everything in our home that is connected to Wi-Fi. We're working on it. We're working mm-hmm. on Turns it. Turns out, yeah. a lot of smart appliances can't figure out when you change the router. Um, Not that... very smart of them. Yeah, I mean, you'd think it's the same login, even same if it's password. the same like Wi-Fi name and password. They'll just be like, "No, this is different. I don't like, like it." Phones, <laughs> laptops, they got it, but like. A smart thermostat that was here when we moved in? No, absolutely not. I've been, I've been saying it for ages. Smart technology is only smart enough to be stupid. Yep, Listen, we exactly. don't love smart technology. However, a lot of the person who lived here before us was very into it. So, yeah, uh... our neighbors <laughs> like yeah they had like uh, me speaking as our neighbor and him speaking as the person who owned this house before us. Both work in software. I'm of the mind that I don't want any of that shit in my house. He was not. Yep. It's like, yeah, yeah, that tracks. Smartest thing you own should be a printer. Yep. Even there's that, a there's a very funny um the printer makes one noise. Yeah. You th- shoot it with a gun. There's yes. a very funny <laughs> clip from Pirate Software where he's like, I hate smart tech and my printer makes a noise, I shoot it. Yeah. Do I own a gun? Mm-hmm. No, but I will yeet it out the <laughs> third floor window. Yeah. The Internet of Things was a fun gimmick, and what frustrates me is a lot of it 
could be useful, especially for like accessibility things. It would be great to be able to automate certain things in the house. Uh, I cannot keep going off on tangents, but I will say that there's a Columbo episode specifically about that, which I was very surprised by when I watched it. Everything uh, comes back to Columbo. <laughs> truly, yeah. It's like the uh, like the the killer of the week is this like genius gimmick inventor, and his wife is in a wheelchair, uh, and he's like built the entire house so that like doors can be opened by clapping the lights can be turned on by you know stuff like that so like she she has this accessibility but he's also very much like no my dear you are too delicate and probably stupid to do my job so you should stay at home where it's safe and i'll go out and do all the complicated stuff because he's an asshole like all columbo villains but it is an interesting point to make that a lot of you know the internet of things and automation could be incredibly useful for accessibility if they weren't all like not only inefficient and frequently stupid but like just directly designed to be listening devices to feed your personal data into Amazon better. Yeah, <laughs> like, come on. Part of the problem with accessible devices based on technology is they are very useful. However, they're only useful a lot of these things as long as the company keeps the software mm -hmm. up to date. So much like a <clears throat> phone might go out of date or even like something like a PlayStation would not be able to support further updates, not no longer support web stuff. If this is something that you use in your day-to-day -day life and now suddenly it's no longer supported for whatever reason, like um, I know someone who had smart wheels basically, so they the wheels oh, had no. push assist and they stopped uh, marketing the app that worked with them in the United States. So they could no longer use that part. Um, I forget what they ended up doing about it, but it was like, really? Like you make this smart product but you can no longer use it because <laughs> someone decided the app was not going to be on the app store anymore yeah. or oh that sucks just like stopped updating the driver which can be accessibility technology should not be allowed to become abandonware you would think so but as it is eh. oh yeah hey adam welcome back hey adam, adam. how you doing <laughs> yeah we are probably going to be i'd say winding down and the foreseeable future yeah. yeah yeah don't get me going yeah. on accessible tech that can be a <laughs> stream. that's another three and a half hours in the tank right immediately yeah. but... <laughs> save it for the next um feeling the rain. next after dark <laughs> <laughs> i have needed to give my voice a break for about a week straight and not a single day this week have i done so no. so i wonder why <laughs> yeah it's crazy i'm gonna need to like uh, tomorrow's going to be a lots of tea day. Maybe I'll get oh, another yeah. one of them Starbucks cold busters. Oh, I, good. Tomorrow is like the first like real work day I'm going to have had in like a week and a half. And I'm so excited mm. to finish like 10 billion things. I'm just or gonna... I'm going to crash and not be able to do anything. I'm hoping that's I'm my plan. Sleep because uh, we were not sleeping well this past week. No. Or mostly this yeah. weekend. But oof. Right yeah. to repair gang. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, -oh. that's, that's us. Yeah. How about we say maybe like five more minutes and then we cut off at, yeah. at 10 past the hour no okay. matter what. And this has been a very yeah. fun stream. So thank you all for, for tuning in and impromptu little little Monday stream that we had going on here today. Yeah, First after yeah. dark in a year and a half. You know, just I'm so glad Monday. that this worked as well as it did because I thoroughly enjoy streaming and I thoroughly enjoy these after dark streams and I really like the Zelda streams, but I, I wasn't sure if you were going to get a, as much of a kick out of it as I did. And I'm glad this worked out as well as it did. Yeah. It's nice to be able to just like yeah. chat. And whenever we ask people, they're like, no, we're just here for the conversation. The game is a bonus. And we're like, oh, well, like the game is a, a thing to focus on. It's like, no, we, we really don't actually need it. We can truly just go off forever if left to our own devices. Yeah. And yes, when we're alone, it's like this still <laughs> all uh <-huh>. the time. <laughs> it's always one the... more thing. Yeah, always just one more thing. But by, by far, my the most surprising thing I ever discovered about streaming was when I did that solo After Dark stream for the first time, and it was just me and chat, and the energy kept up the whole time. Yeah. That was the real surprise, because I was like, I know I can bounce off of other people, but like, what about chat? So, it, anyway. Yeah. I worked mean, good. It's nice when you just have some free time to be able to just chat. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Cult of the Lamb. That's an interesting possibility. Although... Here's the problem. I'm bad at it. <laughs> like, I liked the farming sim slash, like, Animal Crossing but evil part of it. But the other part that's, like, kind of a... It's not really a roguelite because you're just supposed to play through the dungeon, like, once or twice. But the fights are scary and I'm bad at them. Yeah. Uh, I also found a couple glitches that were frustrating, although I think those have been patched. Um, uh, but... Yeah. 
I mean, Linkus Could just recently posted a video playing um, Link's Awakening, which has made me want to play Link's Awakening again. Oh, yeah, again, the, so. the Switch Link's Awakening is very good. I, I, I might have, I have sold Red on that uh, when we were in the car uh, a couple days yeah. ago. <laughs> I need to dig it up, but I do actually have a copy of that. Uh, also, someone was like, could you do another book reading like you did with Dracula? And I do want to. Later in the year, I want to do one for a Christmas carol. Uh, but that's the only one I have currently in the tank. So if anyone has any interesting suggestions for public domain books, yeah. then it's okay to audio I, I have some suggestions, but we can do that offline. The rights can get yeah. a little bit wonky. Yeah, yeah. That's why I could never finish Guards, Guards. Because, like, I sent an email to the Pratchett estate being like, hey, could I continue? And they didn't respond. And I didn't think that was a that was a yes, go ahead. So yeah, I didn't. Yeah, no response <clears throat> is never a yes. <laughs> Yeah, probably could. Yeah, that wouldn't hold up in court even a little bit. Yeah, there's some people who seem to be okay with you reading their books, but there's also a lot of great um, open source books. Which, uh, if you ever need to find an audio recording of a book that is in the public domain, uh, LibriVox, Mm -hmm. really good. Oh yeah, ten out of ten recommend. I used that all the time when I was in high school because I process information a lot better when I'm both seeing it and hearing it at the same time. So I would listen to the LibriVox recordings, and the reason I remember the name is because each chapter starts with, this is a LibriVox recording. <laughs> like, Thank uh, you. Uh, That's smart branding. It's, it's really useful, and it's free. Uh, so 10 out of 10 recommend if you're like in school and need to find a book. Uh, very good audiobooks, free, easily accessible. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Five books of The Wizard of Oz. How much time do you think I have in the average day to stream? Because, like, that could be fun. Yeah. But, boy, that would need to be a lot of different... Like, Dracula was four streams. That was and Dracula's one. not the longest book in the world. Could probably do, like, some myths. Just, like, read. Yeah. I'm sure we can we can spitball yeah. book ideas for, for yeah, hours. Yeah. But we'll... Absolutely. We, we, we'll, we'll think about it some more. We've thought about it before. We'll think about it again. Uh, and hopefully mm-hmm. we'll have some more uh, some more streams. And you'll hear end. about it again. Yeah. Uh, some more, more yeah. streams in the future. But... Um... Count of Monte Cristo? Come oh, God, on. No. Oh, I'd be no. at this for months. Boo. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but then you you wouldn't get to hear about how Eugenie Danglars is definitely a lesbian. It's fine. <laughs> Didn't you already make a video on that? <laughs> no, I've just been trying to for years. <laughs> I finished the reread because I, I listened through it as an audiobook and I was like, this is working great. And still, by the time I got to the end, I had forgotten what happened at the beginning. Oh, someone suggested Aurora. I don't know how that would work. I don't but... think it would. <laughs> it wouldn't. But no. Just go read it on your own time. ComicAurora.com. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right well, i think that was our time limit <laughs> that's that's about our time thank you everybody for uh tuning in sorry about that that weirdness with the uh with the stream glitching out it was almost as if it was some kind of sick prank by the universe yeah. against us so eh. very yeah. very sorry I don't know. easter monday i don't know what it is about april yeah. 1st that just makes everybody go bananas but yeah, i'm glad we managed to pull something out of it oh no 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 it's, some people in chat were talking about it. i have no idea oh. is that the same as the yeah. fish one uh, maybe, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's like a French thing, like some Poisson de Ril, we get, we get fish eh. on the first I thought it was April. some obscure, like, Easter part two, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, Easter it's, Monday, it's, yeah. it's second Easter, exactly. Uh, yeah. Easter's like yeah. 50 days, man. All right, yeah, well. Yeah, in the liturgical calendar. Let's go eat some yeah. chocolate to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, bye, everybody. Bye. Right. Bye.